Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, long time no see. Got a cool puzzle to show you here. Isn't that just a tease? Oh, that would. Anyways, uh, I haven't had any puzzles to show lately because I haven't solved anything. And then just in the last week, I went through several really complicated puzzles and got them solved. So now we got things to share. So this is Lockbox. It was released on Cubic Dissection last, that's my cat, last year. And this is designed and, and built by Eric Fuller, who's uh, just a genius designer. You should look up his work. He's been doing this for like 20 years or so. This is Lockbox, which he considers to be one of his best designs. And I can't argue that. Uh, it's made of a figured waterfall sapel. There's about 40 of these with this wood. A uh, total of about 80 or so of these total. Uh, he says he might return to it later in the year. <clears throat> He's not big on like uh, limited releases and things like that. So we might see this again. But right now it's super rare. Uh, it's a great puzzle. Uh, it combines, you know, a puzzle box. Because you see that, right? A puzzle lock. Right? Um... Another type of puzzle we'll get to, and a sequential discovery, because there's multiple things to do in here and find, tools and all that. It also has one of my favorite things about puzzle boxes that I like, is that when you look at them from the outside, uh, that they seem kind of arcane, in the sense of like, well, what's this divot? What are these notches? Uh, what's this? What's that? What does that do? It just, it, it screams, hey, there's mystery to find. The key is interesting. If you look at it, you'll see that it, the metal pins seem to be bolted all the way through. Um, but if you look on this side, they don't seem to be glued in. Look, they even move when you run your finger over them. If you were to, you know, try to push this in and turn it, it doesn't do anything. And, you know, you can pull it out. But if you don't pull it out just right, you're going to catch that. Which kind of gives you a clue. Now, there's more going on with this key because you need to be. There's not a hot, whole lot to go off of right here. So, you start playing with the pins and you notice they all pop out. Well, all except for one. So, rather than going through the hundred and plus combinations that you can create in here, because it really is like that, I drew a bunch of them up and still missed a few. And that's why it took me six weeks to solve this. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, the polarity matters, a lot of this matters. So if you were to just, you know, put a pin in here and try to see if maybe a different combination does something different, you would find that this turns like a key, stops, seems about right, but it's not doing anything. If you were to reverse the polarity, because I believe in the first step, having matching polarity would have been too easy. So you got to know to turn it around. Hear that? Now, if you were to click it, you can bring it down and you will get nowhere with this puzzle. Uh, this will see that goes over and you'll be like, oh, wow, now I got to go over here. And you're led down a path that is incorrect and it's intentional. Uh, the idea here is that you, oh, let's relock it. There we go. Is that you click it. Oops, got to turn this around backwards. And then push it up. You reverse the polarity, which pushes a pin in there out of the way so you can slide this up. Something interesting is when it slid up, there is a groove inside. And then when you get it high enough in right position, not too high, not too low, this will just naturally oops, slide right into it. And once this is into this and this is up, the bottom piece can move now, which really screams at me and everyone else. I would think a lot of people trying to solve. Uh, let's get this back. See what I mean about it having to be just right. That's wide open. It doesn't want to come down. But if you let it rest, it's also kind of hard to do on camera. There we go. This is completely available now. But that's also what took me the longest to figure out. Because what I've discovered was if you put a pin here, that's what blocks it from turning. You can't have something high here. If you have something high here, it blocks it uh, from turning a quarter, past a quarter way, see? If you put it in the fourth place, you can't turn it at all. You just get that little bit of left. That was the start position. 
So we've got to put it up in the front, okay? And now we can go in all the way around. But remember what we weren't, what we saw earlier that we're not using now, and that's this. Obviously, that hole and having these pins denotes that you know you can extend this and lock it. So if you're to do that, and anyone that has one of these that hasn't solved it yet or even tried it, be careful with these. Uh, when they are in reverse polarity, they can go flying. Now that it's longer, you'll find that you can turn it and it goes in deeper. And now it goes all the way around. So we're not getting any action. Maybe the polarity is wrong. So we're on reverse. Let's go ahead to the same polarity, put it back in. Now when you turn it, loud clicks. And this had me stuck for quite a while. I would put pins in here and try to find ways to uh, work it like a puzzle box, get it open. And what I really was missing was earlier what I said is how these have to have um, all the combinations mapped out. And I was short probably like six. And one of them was the right one. So what we have to do is put a small one here. And I'm not, I don't even quite remember right now if it has to be the same polarity or opposite. We'll find out real quick. On the one that you can't have a tall pin on, turn it in. And that only sounds like one. So let's reverse it from this one, which it's kind of tricky to get out once you have. See what I mean about the pins flying? All right. Kind of breaks one of my rules about puzzles and that being that, is it gonna be, can you break it permanently or lose a part? And with this, you can lose a piece inside of here and never be able to open it again, unless you get a replacement somehow. Uh, so scary, let's see. So we're gonna do, and I've done forgot what polarity I had going, but we will do opposite. And in another puzzle that I showed, I'm not going to say which, we had a similar move to this, what I'm about to do. And maybe you already know. Now you heard two clicks. Now we know we're doing it right. And what you want to do is you need another pin for this hole. So you take it out now that you're open, let it go in here. And now it wants to move. Or I did it wrong again. There we go. Popped up. And now the bottom piece is what slides out. And you get the date, June of 2020, when this was released. And inside, you have now a coin. And it's now a coin release puzzle, too. It's like wearing all the hats. Uh, this is... I have no idea. It's one of those like uh, game token type coins or um, that you would use for like Dungeons and Dragons. I do like it's this odd shape and you have to kind of wedge it in there. And I just locked it back. Well, let's look. There you go. So there's a sequence. There's a nice area here to hold something in. I like that about this. It just keeps giving. Uh, the wood is amazing. Uh, puzzling. It took me a long time. It isn't a, a long puzzle to get through. And I have heard other people saying that they just naturally went through this. Like it made sense to them. So that's fine. Um, people are going to just, you know, do the things the first time. Uh, but it gave me a lot of puzzling value. And what I tend to do is I'm going to be sending this off to a friend to try out. And, uh, they, uh, when I usually send a puzzle off is when I film it. So here we are. So I think this is a great puzzle. Eric Fuller is a genius, I think, with this design stuff. Uh, this one will be staying in my collection for the foreseeable future. And uh, I just think it's really great. The wood choice here, uh, the simplicity of it, 
Uh, there's just a lot going on. It was very uh, rewarding to solve and to get the ahas from. Uh, I had a lot of people try to help me with this one. And this is a hard puzzle to hint at, I guess. Uh, I mean, really, with the key things, other than just telling someone what the combination is, I mean, how do you help them? So I get it. Uh, I think it's really cool that you can see down in here and see kind of what the teeth do to kind of guide you on a path. I think it's nice how it's laser cut. Uh, scoring this, I mean, 95% easily. Uh, this one made me want to collect puzzles, you know, not just solve them but actually keep them and show them to other people and go through the, the whole experience. Even though with the current situation of the world, it's kind of hard to have that moment. But, you know, hey, the longer it takes for that moments to happen, those guests to come over, the more, you know, rare this puzzle will be and it'll be more of a, a uh, rewarding experience to share with others. So let's reset it. It's really simple to reset. Uh, I would have already been reset if I'd put the two pieces back. Uh, this right here wedges in just like that. I'm gonna clear the clearance there of the wood so we don't scratch it up inside and then give it just a little push. We don't wanna wedge it in there permanently. We just don't want it rattling around either. I like the fact that when you come at this puzzle, you have no idea that there's a coin involved. They don't tell you and hopefully whoever you get yours from or the opportunity to puzzle with doesn't tell you as well. Get that in there like that. Remove our pin, put it back right there. Click, that's that. Push this over. And when you're doing a puzzle like this, it has so many, you're like, oh, well, I ever remember to put all this back, but it's so simple. Now, this thing does not like to move unless this piece right here is like in the perfect position. There you go. And now we're locked there. All. The sides are locked. The key, internal, that stuff doesn't move. The key moves through the lock. You don't turn anything in the lock. You are navigating a maze to reach uh, the you know mechanisms that this activates. So the reset becomes very simple because of that. We just push it in right here. We put the other one here. And then we take the short one and put it between them. Push that down in. They'll stick to the metal here. And there you go. You're reset. Put this back here. And like some of his puzzles that he does, uh, he provided these cool bags with it. So I like to keep them out of the sun and the dust. And uh, put them back in the bag, you know. Sometimes I'll set them out. This is a great puzzle uh, also because of its, oops, its size. It's a great, you know, right fit in the hand. So there you go. That is Lockbox by Eric Fuller. I think it's a great puzzle. It demonstrates a lot of uh, ideas in puzzling. And uh, overall, it just kind of hits a lot of notes for me. So that's why I decided to keep it. I'll have some more puzzles to show you guys. I have solved a few recently, so I'm just gonna film them and we'll roll them out, you know, in a timely manner. So I hope everybody's uh, 2021 has been at least decent so far. I know it's a challenge. Uh, and uh, have a great day. Keep on puzzling.